Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to Scouts Live. My name is Morgors and I'm from Scouts UK. And my name is Andrew from the Singapore Scout Association and we will be your hosts for today's edition of Scouts Live. Here on Scouts Live, you'll hear about some of the most exciting news in world scouting, learn new skills and fun activities, and get to know some inspiring scouts from around the world. Also, you will have the opportunity to be live on the show with us. You can call in at any time during the show and talk with us. Just go to scout.org forward slash live for more details about how to call in during the show. And we will hopefully see a few of you during the show today. That is right, Morgos. And today we will have Freya Dawn Ellefson, a scout from Norway who served as a UN Youth Delegate on sustainability. Jinan from Lebanon will be taking will be talking to us about safe from harm in scouting. A group of scouts from Romania will also tell us about their service at the Ukrainian border. And Sabina will show us a fun way to recycle and bring new life to bottle caps. Now let's jump forward to our first segment, Scout Life News. So a lot of things have been happening so far this year in 2022. Importantly, the Messengers of Peace heroes, who are scouts that have done exceptional service actions in their communities, met for the first time in person since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia this week to celebrate 10 years of the amazing Messengers of Peace initiative. Also, since the beginning of the war in Ukraine, scouts have raised almost 500,000 US dollars to support the many scout volunteers that have been mobilizing to meet the overwhelming short term and long term needs in Ukraine and neighboring countries. Thank you to everyone who has donated. All your contributions are making an incredible difference. But if you would like to contribute and you still can, just go to donate to our humanitarian efforts through the Scout donation platform at donate.scout.org. In other news, even though we had the sad news that the World Scout mood in Ireland was cancelled this summer, there will be multiple international opportunities for Rover Scouts to connect one in person once again. In Finland, we will have the Finn Jamboree Kayo 2022 that is expecting 2,000 international participants. In Denmark, 40,000 Danish and international scouts and guides from all over the world will be gathering in Hitland at Northern Europe's biggest jamboree of the year. And in Germany, thousands of scouts and guides will come together to build a tent city on the shores of Lake Politz in Brandenburg. And lastly, in the United States, we will also have the Rover Rally at the Summit Bechtel Reserve, the same exact site as the 24th World Scout Jamboree. I'm quite jealous. All those opportunities sound absolutely amazing. For these and even more international opportunity uh, during the months of July and August, make sure to visit scout.org forward slash rover hyphen opportunities hyphen 2022. Now, moving on to our next segment, we'll bring our reporter Angelina from Palestine, who will interview a special guest. Freya Dawn Ellefson, a scout from Norway who has served as a UN Youth Delegate on Sustainability. The floor is now yours, Angelina. Take it away. Thank you, Andrew and Margos, for the introduction. My name is Angelina. I'm a scout from Palestine, and today we are with Freya Dawn Ellefson. Freya is a scout from Norway who served as UN Delegate on Sustainability. Hello, Freya. Thank you for being with us at Scouts Live. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Can you please tell us what it means to be a UN Youth Delegate on Sustainability? And how did you become one? Um, so it depends a little bit on the country. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, a UN Youth Delegate is a person 
who is a young person who is chosen by their country, usually by their national youth organization, to represent young people at UN youth conferences. So there's quite a few. There's in the UN women, there's in health, there's in environment. And um, mine was, uh, yeah, HLPF, uh, which was the high level forum on sustainability, uh, focusing on the sustainable goals, if you recognize those colorful circles. That's beautiful. So the way you're chosen, um, as I said, it's the National Youth Council in most places, but not all places. So it's really a matter of uh, researching a little bit and figuring mm -hmm. out what your country does. Also, not all countries have youth delegates to all conferences. Um, so sometimes the lobby work and the political work starts already with making sure that there's a spot. What it really means to be a youth delegate um, depends again on your country and your conference. But for me, it meant being part of the delegation and knowing that I was the only person in the delegation who was a young person and whose main focus was young people. So I attended meetings, I spoke in opening statement of Norway, I helped prepare our political documents and said, oh, hello, can we make sure that you know, meaningful participation of children in youth is part of this? And I also spent a lot of time talking to other young people from other countries and from my own country to make sure that what I was saying was an accurate description of what they actually wanted me to say. And I think- Wow, that's really amazing of you. Wonderful. Privilege. <laughs> now, what did it mean to you as a scout to have this role? I think for me, it's a, to be able to do it as a scout rather than, mm -hmm. for example, as a member of a political youth party was a recognition of the scout experience and the fact that scouting actually is a really important actor in the society and that uh, my experience from scouting mattered. So my conference experience uh, was counted from World Scout Conferences and European Scout Conferences was viewed as really good uh, experience for a big UN conference. Um, my political communication uh, volunteering counted as a really good volunteering experience. And working with political documents within the Scouts was recognized as, yeah, you, you know how to work with political documents. Yes. And I think a lot of Scouts don't realize that. They don't realize how valuable they are. Exactly. Um, so I really hope that I was the first scout uh, to attend this conference for Norway, that now more scouts after me realize that, you know, yeah. what we do is important um, and we can use that also at the UN. I agree. It's really important. Now, Freya, how do you think that scouts can contribute and advocate for sustainability? I think it's really about caring about it, which I think most scouts mm -hmm. already do, um, and then doing something about it. Um, so kind of finding a, a problem that you're super passionate about because sustainability is big. It covers climate, it covers gender inequality, it covers poverty. There are 17 different goals and they all cover different things. So finding that one or two goals that you're really passionate about, which is kind of your strength, educate yourself about it and then do something about it uh, to show us an example that yes we can do something about it and then inspire someone else to do it so you know it yeah. can be something super small like teaching a little brother uh, to pick up trash in the beach sure. or it can be something really big like holding your government accountable for uh, gender equality um, yeah but because there's 50 million of us like scouts is a big movement um, True. <laughs> both of those actions matter, right? Like the picking up, if all the little brothers, if all the scouts pick up the trash on the beach, you're getting somewhere and the goal of protecting marine life for sure. Yes, it all starts with doing something at first, doesn't it? <laughs> Indeed. And I'm here then to yes. inspire you and say, you can actually go a bit further. You can take what you're doing and you can make sure that someone else is doing it too. Um, True. Whether it's your local scout group or you reach out further to your national youth council or uh, your government. Indeed. Now, do you have any last message that you would like to tell all of the young people watching us today? Just remember, like, you don't need to underestimate your experience 
Um, I was about to say just because you're scouts, but I don't think that's a just. Um, mm -hmm. The experience and the knowledge and the inputs you have are super valuable. Um, and you just need to find those right channels and use them. Wonderful. <laughs> So I want to thank you, Freya, for that. It was a pleasure having you here with the show today with us. And thank you very much. It was a beautiful experience with you. Thank you very much for the facilitation. This was Angelina reporting for Scouts Live. Now back with the hosts, Andrew and Margos. Thank you very much, Angelina and Freya. And it was a really insightful conversation that they had, especially when Freya shared how even the smallest actions that we do, maybe teaching your younger brother, your younger siblings about, you know, sustainability is the way forward as we create small impacts that lead to a much greater impact on the world. So as you can see, we all can do something to improve the sustainability of our planet. And if you want to know more about how Scouts are contributing to the Sustainable Development Goals, visit the Scouts for SDG site at sdgs.scout.org. There, you can find information about the SDGs and thousands of stories of Scout projects from around the world. That's right, Andrew. I feel quite inspired by that conversation. And so Scouts for SDGs is a great place to get inspiration and take action for the SDGs. And if you already have a community service project, you can register it there to inspire even more Scouts. Now, just before going to the next segment, I think we can shout out some of the people in the comments. We've got Scouts from Argentina, Nigeria, Brazil, Portugal, uh, the, the Boy Scouts of America. From? Uganda, <laughs> Burundi, Australia and Singapore. Yeah, thank you yes. guys for joining us tonight. <laughs> yeah. So that's absolutely amazing. Keep commenting and we can shout you out as we go. But for our next segment, we have Spotlight. Our reporter Francesco from Argentina will interview a group of scouts from Romania who've been supporting hundreds of people fleeing the conflict in the Ukraine. So the floor is yours, Francesco. Thank you, Andrew and Margu, for the introduction. My name is Francesco. I'm from Argentina. And today we are with Luca, Michaela, and I hope that's, that's properly pronounced, uh, Paul Alexandru, and Stella, who, uh, which are scout, uh, scouts from Romania and have been helping refugees from UK, uh, Ukraine sorry, uh, find safety. Yeah. Well, hello, guys. I'm so happy that you're here today and you're sharing with us your story um, to get started and to get people to know you. You should introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a little bit about um, what's going on in Ukraine and, uh, and sorry, in Ukraine and, uh, and how does it affect and what or what does it mean to countries like Romania? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Luca and uh, I am a scout in uh, Romania, we, uh, all of us are living in Bej and we are, all of us are in the same scout center. Mihaela is our scout leader and she's, she's the hero of everything that we've done here and nothing would have been possible without her. She's the reason why we are doing this and she, she's just amazing. Um, the war in Ukraine, it was um, bad news for everyone because we didn't expect to see this uh, happening exactly at the border because Romania is sharing the border with Ukraine. And in the first days of the conflict, it was pretty difficult to manage uh, the situation because there was no uh, help coming from uh, organizations like um, let's say, uh, police or local authorities, but we managed. I'm Paul and this is my mom, Stella. She has been our translator from day one. She can fluently speak Ukrainian and she was helping us at the border to calm people down and uh, let uh, talk 
she talked with them so we can find them a place to stay and uh, accommodation and everything they needed here and uh, i myself went to the border a few times and uh, help people there organize and uh, again helping young people feel safe uh, feel safe there i'm michaela and i want uh, to say that we are uh, from day one until now and we are still there and helping people with everything uh, we can from accommodation founding jobs uh, make activities with uh, children refugees children and uh, all the stuff that we used to make uh, a lot of people coming and uh, we are few and don't have uh, enough cars and everybody put his own car to make uh, the road uh, where uh, they need to the airport to the other part of the country in, in other countries in Hungary, Slovakia, Italy, Germany. Uh, we are a lot of South from Romania. Yes. Yeah. If I can also add the fact that uh, not only we here and what Michaela said, the other scouts were helping us. We were two or three people at the border, and we were just uh, giving telephone number, uh, calling people to say, "Look, we have uh, five refugees coming to Bucharest. Can you find them somewhere to stay? Can you find them a house? Can you find them a train ticket to go from our country to the next?" And we we usually made everything free for refugees. We just uh, let them stay at uh, other uh, volunteers' houses or at scouts' houses, and uh, we didn't take any money. We don't, didn't charge any money for anyone, and we just helped uh, the refugees through through the help of other scouts, even though we were uh, a few at the border. I'm just I'm stunned. I'm honestly stunned with your your action. What did make you want to get involved in these activities, and I how does that Feet or how does that match with the reason you became scouts in the first place? I honestly became a uh, scout because I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to leave the world better than I found it. And I, I honestly think that, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, I think that uh, this situation was the best moment to serve my oath, as I said previously. And it's not just about the, uh, the oath itself, but it's about the people. It's about seeing a smile on people's face, it, it can make your day. It can make your day easily. Uh, how, uh, what can scouts all over the world do to help? Well, the most important thing that we uh, realized over time was the fact that not only that they need our help to, to get through our country or stay in our country, but they also need to integrate in the, in the new society they, they went to. As my mom uh, told me, she's helping uh, translate. She, she is learning, uh, she's teaching them our language so they can integrate more easily. So you can most probably do the same. If you know someone that speaks Ukrainian or if you know Ukrainian, you can try to teach these people your natural language, the, the, the language that is in, the, in that country. So they can more easily integrate in, in this uh, area and also do activities with with kids, do show your uh, appreciation to, to these kind of people because they need it. They're desperate. They really need uh, need someone they can trust. And we, the scouts, should, should be their, their trusting field. Well, that's a, that's a pretty cool and pretty nice way to make them feel warm and safe and with someone they can trust. We are very lucky to have uh, Mama Stella, what we call the uh, mom's, uh, Paul's mom. And uh, because she speaks Ukrainian and uh, so us with uh, scarves and scouts, uh, they, after they uh, trust us. Yeah, since my mom gained her trust, we even now have some people coming to our house and uh, looking to to integrate more. And uh, she is teaching them Romanian. She's at the medium level already. She's teaching them normal phrases so they can easily more integrate. And we she gets uh, phone calls all day from different people from different parts of Romania, from Ukrainian people, having different sorts of problems. And uh, we mainly try to, to, to solve them because they trust us. Wow. I can't even imagine the situation over there, but I can imagine myself helping with this uh, with this advice that I've been receiving from you guys. 
that seems very helpful. If, if you could send a message to other scouts and the people you've helped so far, what would you say? Well, for the other scouts, I'd say keep doing what you're doing for the scouts that help us. We really needed, needed your help and we still do because the situation ain't over. And for the people that uh, we helped, we they know they can trust us. They can spread the message uh, moreover and call their friends, their family. If you know that someone is coming, send, try to send them through us because I mean, they already do are doing that. They're trying to send people to us. So, you know, we can help them. I'd say keep keep on going because this situation will, will get over eventually and uh, things are going to be way better. We're, we're here to help you always ready. It's important, uh, even a small gesture or a small thing for them is big. And all together, for sure, we are making a very big job. We are as scouts all over the world. We are, we are thankful for, for your service, because even if it's not with us, we are helping someone. We are living a world better than when we found it so um, that's amazing our pleasure thank you we share this with uh, you because we receive this as a gift and we share with all of you from everywhere <laughs> it's amazing the flag seems amazing yeah and well thank you for being here and well this was Francesco from Scouts de Argentina, reporting for Scouts Live Show. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interview, Francesco, and thank you to Luca, Paul, Estella, and Michaela for your service to the community. It really resonated what you said there. We're here to help. Um, so if you think you can help in any way, please do. Um, and for anyone watching and you're asking, how can I help? Uh, you can donate to the Ukrainian Scouts Humanitarian Response through the Scout Donation platform. We'll add a link in the comments um, and it's on the screen there for you now. And remember that at any point throughout this, you can call in via scout.org forward slash live um, to get on the show with us. But Andrew, have you seen any new countries come up in the comments? Oh, yes. Our comment section is getting even more international. We're having people from Angola, Vietnam, Jordan, Japan, all over the mm -hmm. world. Everyone's tuning in to our comment section. So that's amazing. All right. So please stick around in the comments because for our next segment, we'll be doing a short quiz on the Scouts for SDGs. All right, so more gals and I will share the questions and get ready to type in the comments and we'll give you a shout out if your answer is correct. Okay, so I will start with our first question. All right, so first question is, how many sustainable development goals are there? Okay, option is A, 10, B, 17, C, 25. So if you have the right answer, please send it in the comments. All right, and we'll tell you if it's correct or not. I want to be really optimistic and think there's a lot of goals because we really want to aim high. But what is everyone else thinking in those comments? Oh, OK, we've got a few Bs coming through. Okay. Bs, 17 from Hyman. OK, keep them coming. 17, OK, we'll take a look at a couple more. Oh, I think everyone's getting okay. the gist. <laughs> yep, everyone seems to be on the same page. And yes, the answer is 17. Okay, there are 17 sustainable development goals ranging from various aspects from poverty, hunger, healthcare, and even partnerships for the goals. Okay, and more girls, how about you bring us through the second question? Yeah, so the second question is, the SDG number six is clean water and sanitation, but what does the goal want to accomplish? Is it A, access to clean drinking water, B, access to proper toilet facilities, or C, all of the above. Now, Andrew, what are you thinking for this one? Ooh, it kind of feels like A, kind of feels like B, so I'm not too sure. Yeah. I need the help from our comment section to tell us. Is it A, yeah. B, or C? 
keep commenting what we're thinking. We've got some A's coming through. I like it. It's a tricky one. It's sort of, you yeah. know, oh, we've got some C's again. C's. Okay. Nice. A's. We've also got greetings from Pakistan. Hello, back to you. Yep. <laughs> Hello from Malaysia as well. Okay, so I, th A's. I yeah. think people are getting it. So, yeah, so a lot of people have put A, access to clean drinking water, but it is also... B as well, access to proper toilet facilities. So the actual answer is C. It's all of the above. SDG number six is very important because providing access to clean water and proper sanitation services can save millions of lives each year by preventing waterborne diseases, dehydration and contamination. Thank you very much for everyone in the comments all around the world for being so active and participative with our mini SDGs quiz. Just a reminder, you can appear on the show with us if you want to go live with the two of us. So please go to the website scout.org forward slash live. It's popped out at the bottom left right there. Scout.org forward slash live. And we will take some calls from a couple of scouts who join. All right. Awesome. Now, our next segment is called Experts. In this segment, our reporter Tan will interview Jinan from Lebanon, and they'll be talking to us about safe from harm in scouting. The floor is yours, Tan. Well, thank you, I'm Juliet Rogals, for the introduction. And hello to everybody. My name is Tang. I'm from Barbados, Scouts, Vietnam. And uh, I am in Ho Chi Minh City now and outside. So maybe you guys can hear some kind of motorbike noises from my side. And uh, in today's show, we have Jinan Sayed, who is a Scout volunteer. And she will be talking to us about safe from home in scouting. And uh, hello, Jinan. Firstly, can you introduce about yourself? Yes, sure. Thank you. And hello, everyone. My name is Jinan Sayed. I'm 27 years old. I'm a pharmacist and I live in Beirut, Lebanon. And I have been in scouting for more than 20 years. And for sure, scouting is my hobby. Wow, that's, that's so huge. Like more than 20 years in scouting. That's a really amazing experience in scouting. So about safe from harm, can you share with us what does it mean to be safe from harm in scouting? Yes, so briefly, in scouting, safe from harm refers to the safeguarding of children and young people, which means keeping them safe at all aspects and at all times. Oh yeah, keeping them safe at all aspects and all times. Thank you so much for the definition. And uh, so what exactly is your role regarding safe from harm? Yes, so regarding my role with WASM, I'm a Safe From Harm Service Consultant and I'm a team member in the Safe From Harm Compliance Project. On the national level, I'm the chairperson of the Safe From Harm Committee in the Lebanese, uh, in the Lebanese uh, uh, Scouting Federation. Uh -huh. So I see like recently your role is like totally related to Safe From Harm, right? So. Uh, as you know, part of creating a safe environment for scouts is through being really good listeners to others, right? So, with your experience, do you have any kind of tips or tricks, you know, for scouts to be active listeners? Because I think this is really important, but also not an easy part to do, right? Yes. As a scout yourself, I'm sure you have some good ideas. What are some of the ways you have been there for a friend in need? Well, I don't know, maybe try to listen. <laughs> it sounds like you have been a great friend. I have some basic tips to help everyone become an active listener. So first of all, find a quiet space to talk where people can still see you. Listen attentively to what your friend has to say. Do not judge or question what they have to say. They are expressing their own feelings. Do not ask further questions to get more details. You are not an investigator. Do not interrupt. Do not promise that you will solve the issue or that you will not repeat anything not to break the trust of the person you are working with. As needed, offer your support and encourage the person to report the situation to a trusted adult. Scouts, the next time you're having a conversation with a friend, try to follow those principles and see how the conversation goes. 
Wow, that's that's really amazing. I think it's really helpful tips for our participants today. So uh, I'm really also impressed with what you say. Like, try to listen. Do not judge or question anything because I think this is really important, right? Like. People come to us for listeners, not you know, looking for advisors. So it's really amazing and really wonderful tips. And um, we are a couple of days away from the safe from home week, and it's really exciting, really interesting to me because this is like the very first time I experienced this. So, what will be happening this week exactly? Yes, the safe from home week is from May 16th to the 20th. It's a week dedicated to learning and sharing about safe from harm topics. So keep an eye on our social media at World Scouting for lots of content, including live streaming, quizzes, scenarios, and the opportunities to share on our Instagram stories. With your local group, we encourage you to get some time during the week to talk about safe from harm and do activities together from our toolkits, like the anti-bullying toolkit. Safe from harm is important all the year, but during this week, let's each commit to learning and implementing at least one new thing to help make scouting safer. Oh yeah, that's just really worth waiting and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much for that, Jinan. It's been a very big pleasure having you in the show today. And this was Tang reporting for Scouts Live, back with Andrew and Morgels. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Tan and Jeanan. I'm really going to make sure I work on my active listening and I'm going to check out those socials for sure. And I'm sure many of us will keep trying to improve our listening skills and safe from harm practices with those tips. Now, I do believe that there is a scout calling in to the show. So, Andrew, do you think we should maybe say hello? Yeah. Or not, maybe not. We might come back to them later. Um, yeah, but what okay. we can do is give a bit of a shout out to some more of those scouts on those comments. Yes. Uh, I see Zimbabwe. Yep, we have Chile. We've got Chile. Uganda, Malaysia. Everyone's joining in. Greece, perfect. And all the way from the United Arab Emirates. Amazing, mm -hmm. okay. Our audience is getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. Okay, so now to move on to our next segment. Okay, grab your art and craft supplies because Sabina from Romania will be showing us a very creative way to do recycling by doing art. So Sabina, the floor is yours. Take it away. Hello and be prepared. I'm Sabina, scout from Romania. Do you know that this little thing is among the top 5 deadliest ocean pollutants for sea life? Well, this might sound terrifying, but this is the truth. That's why all of us should take action and be aware of the importance of recycling. Recycling has numerous benefits like cutting carbon emissions, protecting wildlife, and so on. But the problem with these bottle caps is that not every region is capable of recycling them. But that doesn't mean that you can do something useful and creative with them. So, last year, our center implemented a new project, having the goal to transform these into art. All the scouts from every age group, all the families, all the people from our community were involved. We managed to collect over 40,000 bottle caps. Now you'll find out what we did with these things. The Petra called Zimbri is presenting you the great exhibition of modern art. This is the process of building it. First, you'll need a board and then something to be the background. We use some cardboards and then some tape to stick the post-its on the board. Here are the two backgrounds we've just finished and this is the last. There the boys are sorting the ball caps by color. Right now, we are almost finished with our first painting, a very popular banana. We used some glue to stick the caps on the board and the situation got a little bit sticky, so be careful with it. And now the result, the first painting.
precisely from the order of diphtheria, Fly decided to sit on this painting. Due to a well-known trend in our country, we decided to capture this beautiful insect. The painting number two. Due to coronavirus, we were not able to go to the beach last year. So, this illustrates a sunny day at a beach with a very calm sea. Painting number three. This is a reproduction of a very famous work of art, banana with tape. Our banana is not so expensive, but it is more environmentally friendly. This was the great exhibition of modern art. Thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoyed our way of recycling bottle caps. Through this activity, we want to encourage you to use all the resources in the benefit of the environment. As BP said, leave this world a little better than you found it. So, we encourage you and your Scout Center to take part in this movement. All you have to do is collect bottle caps, be creative, post your artwork on social media and tag World Scouting, and encourage your community to follow your example. This was Sabina reporting for Scouts Live. Back to the house now. All right, and thank you very much, Savina. It's a really creative way to see how these bottle caps are given a new life by using them for art pieces like that. And very creative ones as well. I really love the banana on tape art piece. Okay, and I'm sure many scouts watching at home will try doing some of this art themselves. Morgors, what do you think if we do one more quiz on the SDGs with our comment section? I think that sounds like a great idea. There seems like there's even more people to take part. Uh, we've got Ecuador, the Philippines, Malaysia and Taiwan. So, yeah, let's jump straight in. What is our first question, Andrew? OK, for everyone watching, our first question is, when did the United Nations member states adopt the SDGs? Is it A, 2001, B, 2015 or C? 2019. What are we okay. thinking? Make sure to put your answer in the comments and play along with our little quiz. Right, so if you've got any idea on what the answer is, please insert your option into the comments. All right. Okay, we've got one answer. Okay, 2015 <laughs> from Animal Rule. Okay, keep them coming. Okay. Well, we've got, okay. yeah, someone thinks it's 2001. Yep. Another one thinks it's 2001. Okay. What do you think, Andrew? What's your opinion on the question? Ooh, this is a tough one because mm. I know why some people are thinking 2001 and I know why some think 2015. So it is a tough one. I think, okay, by majority, it is going to be 2015. And more goes. Is that the answer? Yes, the answer is 2015. Um, and our second question that we're going to go to is when does hu when does humanity want to achieve the goals? A, 2025, B, 2030, or C, 2050. Now make sure put your answers in the comments. You're either very optimistic or very pessimistic. Um, <laughs> we'll see what you think. But when does humanity want to achieve the goals? Oh, well, we've got a few people coming in with you. B, 2030. 2030, yep. 20... 2015 that's very optimistic i like it not even an option but i like it <laughs> all right okay, and okay we have a scout joining us yeah. right isn't that right morgos yes we do what uh what do we think the answer was to this question before we jump into the call oh here we go <laughs> hello. Hi, hello where are you from Hello. <coughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can yes, hear you loud and clear. clear. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, hi, I'm Kelvin from Singapore. <laughs> hi, awesome. Kelvin. Nice to see you. <laughs> so, Kelvin, what do you think the answer to our question is? When does humanity want to achieve the goals? 
Oh, I believe the answer should be B. <laughs> right. Andrew, is that the correct answer? And to Kelvin and everyone in the comment section, yes, the answer is B, 2030. That means in eight years, we have to make urgent progress if we want to achieve them by the year 2030. All right, so Kelvin, thank you for joining us tonight and answering our questions so enthusiastically. So before you go, is there any message you'd like to send to the people watching at home? Uh, well, I hope everyone who is watching at home at least support the Scouts for SDG initiatives, especially the Better World Framework, so that we can all achieve the uh, completion and attainment of the seven goals. That is awesome, Kelvin. Thank you so much for calling and participating in our trivia today. We hope you had fun with the two of us. And yeah, wishing you to have a great day or a great night, wherever you're from. <laughs> of course. Happy you scouting, too. Kelvin. It was nice <laughs> to meet scouting. you. Happy <laughs> scouting. Now, we may have someone else coming into the call, but let's have a look at those comments. Where else are you from in the world? Comment from what scouting organisation you're from or whereabouts you're based. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and it's been absolutely amazing to see so many different uh, countries. Andrew, I think you had a fan yourself in the comments earlier. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I'm seeing a lot of new countries coming in as well. We've got Nepal, Zambia, Tanzania coming in. So this is awesome. And Andrew, looking at those wonderful neckers behind you, have you got any any country there that's really far away or really wacky? Ah, yes, that's a good question, actually. I would say the furthest or one of the rarest scarves I managed to get is for Mauritius. So you can see mm -hmm. on the right hand most side, the one in white. Yeah, got it at one of the rover moots that I went for before the COVID-19 pandemic swept all of us. <laughs> Hey, that's really yeah. cool. Okay, Mauritius. I don't think I can beat Mauritius. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've got like uh, I've got Germany. That was quite a cool one. I got that from an international camp. Um, but yeah, make sure we've got some more scouts from Australia here and Zimbabwe. That's really exciting. Um, hopefully, you're all yeah. having a wonderful day, night, afternoon. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Okay, so. It's been quite a good time tonight, isn't it, more girls? And we've definitely had lots of fun during tonight's show. But sadly, it's time to say goodbye after all that we've done tonight with the quizzes and our video sharings from all over the world. Yeah, hopefully you guys have learned a lot about active listening, SDGs and how you can help in the Ukraine. But sadly, it is time to say goodbye. Yep. And to everyone watching, before you all go, don't forget that next week, is safe from harm week so please check out our at world scouting social media channels and scout.org to learn more about creating a safe environment for everyone in the scout movement and once again a huge thank you to everyone who has been giving their time and resources to those affected by the war in ukraine that is right so you can still donate through the scout donation platform do not worry okay the link is over there donate.scout.org all right, and every contribution is making a big difference to those who need it. And so that is our show today. Thank you very much for joining us on Scouts Live. Remember to keep sharing your service projects on sdgs.scout.org for your chance to be featured in the next Scouts Live episode. Stay tuned on all at World Scouting social media channels to know when the next show is happening. Thank you to all the volunteer moderators and guests who helped make today's show possible. And a big special thank you to our partners, Al Walid Philanthropies, for supporting this live show and our Scouts for SDGs initiative. This has been Andrew from Singapore. And this is Morgos from the United Kingdom. See you soon. Happy Scouting. And thank and you for thank watching. Thank you for watching.